So we want to do some yoga, some sacrifice. Yogyo by Vishnu. The purpose of yogyo is sacrifice is for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu. So we should understand what that sacrifice is and what the sacrifice is in Kali Yuga. And we'll try to cover a number of different topics in the next few days. Tonight we can speak a little bit about this song. If you say that this is a yagya, then what's the ghee? What's the fire? What's the spoon? What are the different uh, personalities who are taking part in this yagya? We can tell you one preliminary point is that a yagya requires the participation of many different personalities. In the Ashamedha Yagya, they would invite all the, the senior persons in the whole world, and maybe even sometimes the demigods. So we also require some participation in the Yagya. And in the Yagya, it's not that the Hotri or the priest is any better than the persons who are attending the program. Because it's for the pleasure of Lord Vishnu. It's not for the pleasure of the Hotri, the priest, or for the pleasure of the uh, persons attending. So we all have a function. There's a nice verse which describes this by uh, Srila Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami. It's part of his invocation to his uh, Govinda Lilam Rita, a very elevated book. He says there, Madasya Maru Sanchara Kinam Gango Kulomukyam Santa Pushnavi Mamsnigda Karna Kasra Samita. He describes a dilemma, the same dilemma that we're faced with now. He says that this kata that I'm speaking is like a cow. We have cows here on the streets? No, not so many. Not so many. Yes, but not real cows. Not so many. Not like India. Huh? Not very nice here. You have some vegetable scraps or something you can put them out and feed the cows. You can't do that here. Huh? No. You have to go to a farm. <laughs> because cows, they don't like to stay. Where do cows want to go? They want to go to the cow planet. What is the cow planet? Goloka. Golok. They want to go to Vrindavan. So, Krishna Das Kavras Goswami says, this kata, this thing I want to speak, is like a cow. And this cow of my kata, it wants to go to Vrindavan, but this poor cow is suffering in a desert of my tongue. So, he's praying, Karna Kasra Sanido, he's praying to all of you. This is your part in the yoga. You know? That with your ears, because in, the, in your ears there's a lot of nice, there's a nice pond of rasa, a nice pond of water. So you please give shelter to this cow in the form of our kata in your ears. You do that for us? So this is such a nice song. This is from uh, Lochandas Thakur's Chaitanya Mangal. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's speaking to his devotees. Mm -hmm. And we can uh, sing Yagyara Mahima. My Sankirtan Yagya, the glories of this thing are very, very amazing. He says, Asarada Shastri Kai Ihar Mahima Garima. All the Shastras, they glorify the Sankirtan Yagya. What does that mean? If all the Shastras glorify the Sankirtan Yagya, then why isn't Sankirtan? the Yuga Dharma for every age? This is an interesting question. Mm -hmm. Maybe we'll come back to that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Sarva Dharma Sae Sankirtan Dharma Pish 
says, Sarva Dharma Sar, of all the different dharmas, all the different religious activities, or another definition of dharma we could take using a drudhatu, which means um, the essential elements of all the important things, of all the essential things, this Sankirtan is the essence of all of those. Dharma itself, and one, one meaning is essence. So this is the essence of the essence. The Dharma Sar, the Sankirtan Dharma. Vishesha Jani Kali Yuga E Karma. That this is especially, this is the karma which is intention for Kali Yuga. Why for this age? This is a good question. Required, mm -hmm. we need to have uh, you need to have a car, but you also need to have Miso Prabhu show you how to drive the car, <laughs> or you need a manual. Mm -hmm. If you have a, some new camera or something like that, but there's no manual, then you don't know what to do with it. So Nam is there, but we also need Nam Mahima, the glories of the holy name. Mm -hmm. And anyone who chants Krishna's name in this age, that person they'll become self-realized. Right? And the whole Vedic literatures, they glorify Krishna Nam, and they give mercy. There's a purpose. Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, he raises a question. What is the necessity? I think we can read this. Let's see. Nice point he makes. What is the necessity of Krishna Kata if we have... Uh, the holy name. Hmm? It says Harinama, Harinama, Harinama Eva Kevalam. Huh? It doesn't say Shastra Swajaya, Shastra Swajaya, Shastra Swajaya uh, Eva Kevalam. Huh? So, what are we having Hari Kata for? In his Brabiti commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam, in the very first verse, in the very first paragraph, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur explains, Bhagavan er Swarupa Shakti Rupa Bhakti Vidyai Sabda Brahma Nameshwaraha Swaraha. He says that just as Krishna, you can't worship Krishna properly alone, there's a girl next to him, we worship along with him, Srimati Radharani, that's Krishna's Surup Shakti. And you can't approach Krishna without his Surup Shakti. Mm -hmm. Similarly, recitation of Harinam, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta says, is incomplete and improper unless it's accompanied by the Surup Shakti of Harinam, which is Harikatha. Mm -hmm. This is Srimati Radharani, is always glorifying Krishna. So, Nam Mahima is a Surup Shakti of Krishna's name. And Nam Mahima is glorifying the holy name. So the two go hand in hand. And they're necessary. They're very, both are very important. Mm -hmm. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he goes on to describe them. What is this yagya? Sabaloka Karagarta Kutra so if you're going to do a yagya, you have to have a pit, a fire pit, hmm, to put the ghee in and have the fire in. So what is the pit in Kali Yuga? It's your ear. So then, what is the ghee that you're going to put in that, that pit? Hmm? Jiva, uh, shrava, the tongue. First of all, that's the ladle, that's the, the shrava. You have a sukh and shrava, uh, two different types of spoons when you're doing yagya. 
So the shrava, the main spoon, that's your tongue. And what is the uh, gi in that sacrifice? Dvani rasa grita manohar. The sound of Krishna's names. That's the pleasing gi in that fire. So what happens when you pour that ghee in your ear? Have you ever poured ghee in your ear, Babu? You can try sometime. Okay, see what happens to a hot pot. <laughs> so this is a different kind of... If you pour ghee in your ear, you'll get a big headache. It won't be very good for you. But this ghee, this ghee of Krishna's name is different. When it goes in the ear, then it goes to the heart. And in your heart, there's a fire. And that's the fire of bhakti. And when that ghee of Krishna's name goes through the kun, the fire, fire pit from the spoon of your tongue, into your ear, it goes to your heart. So if you're taking that ghee and you're pouring it, and you're doing a yagya and you're, you're talking to someone while you're doing the yagya and you're pouring the ghee over here and sometimes you pour it over here, there's no yagya going on and the fire will go out. So we have to take that spoon of our tongue and pour the ghee in our ear. If you pour it, just you just dump it on the ground in front of everyone, then it won't go into your heart and it won't make that fire burn more in your heart. And that fire is a fire of bhakti. So in this yagya, we do this yagya by hearing carefully, by listening. And if we listen carefully to that holy name, that holy name goes into the ear. Prabhupada said, just like medicine, you may not know that it's medicine. Sometimes a mother gives medicine to a child and says, here's some candy. And they give a, there's a song they used to sing when I was a child. A spoonful of sugar makes the medicine go down. So you give them a spoon of sugar along with the medicine and the child thinks, yes, it's very good, nice sugar. The child doesn't understand there's medicine being going to take him. But that medicine, even though the child doesn't understand it, is going to act. So when this uh, ghee of the holy name goes through our ear and enters into the fire of our heart, then the fire of bhakti begins to burn. And then when you have a big fire in your body inside, something's going to happen on the outside, your body starts shaking like a leaf. You know? And your hair stands on end, and tears come, and all the different ecstatic symptoms follow. Sarva pape muta hai salajana kache Sarva kyani muti ta Sankirtan procession in, and everybody starts dancing huh? on the street. And sometimes we see they do in, down Soho Street when they do Harinam. All the non devotees, they also come, especially Halloween night or something. They come and they also start dancing ecstatic. We do Harinam here on, Hari, on ha Halloween night also. We have Halloween and then. Uh, no, we don't really celebrate. Oh, that's good. Yeah. <laughs> In America and Los Angeles, every year they have a big hiding on, on Halloween night. And they go to Hollywood Boulevard, and the police close the whole street off. And there's thousands of people in their costumes, and, and they're completely drunk, and the devotees come. And it's, it's quite a thing. It's interesting because, like the week before, there's always a number of people who come to the temple buying devotees and purchase. <laughs> well, then we see them again. <laughs> There's some students and they think, yeah, I'll, I'll dress up like a Hare Krishna. That's all they and they go to Hollywood Boulevard, it's a big place to go. And they're drunk and they're wandering around with some fake hope. And then they see the devotees and then they, they go and they're also dancing. Because that's the nature of things. When this fire, this ghee of the holy name enters into the heart, then the, the fire of bhakti begins to burn, and we start yeah. dancing. Uh -huh. And sarva pape muktahoy, all the, the uh, pop, we become delivered from that. Uh -huh. Because when that pop is in, then you can't dance. You can't dance very much if you're weighted down with lots of sins. But when this fire of bhakti comes, 
then all that pop is burned to ashes. And the living entities all begin to dance very, very wonderfully. Mm -hmm. And all liberation, mukti, and all the different uh, uh, you know, cities, they all follow behind that. But on this Harinam party, when Mukti Devi, Prasanna Liberation personified, she comes and says, Hey, hey, the devotees don't even pay attention to her because they're so ecstatic. They're so absorbed in the kirtan, they don't care about liberation. And so then liberation, she comes, uh -huh, and she offers her obeisances. And she sees, oh, I can't, they don't want anything from me. So I'll also join the Sankirtan party. <laughs> and Mukti Devi, she also starts dancing in the Hari party. Say Yagya Bediya Rohe Vaishnava All of our acharyas, they're taking part in that yajna. That's where they're at. You want to come close to your Gurudev. Mm -hmm. Where is he? Mm -hmm. What is it? Um, Amita Kangala, mm -hmm. Krishna Bhagishna Boli, Daitava Pachi Pachi. I'm running after my Gurudev. Why am I, am I running after him? Is it necessary to run after your guru? Mama. Why is it necessary? Why does he say he's running it? Because your guru Dave is running. And who is he running after? He's running after his guru. And who is his guru running after? He's running after his guru. Huh? And this way everyone is running, trying to catch up with that person. What does it mean? Because all of Mahaprabhu's associates, they're doing this yajna, this Sankirtan yajna. And all of our acharyas, all of our gurus, they're running to go to take part in that Sankirtan Yajna. And we're asking them also, we also want to take part in that. So we're chanting, running behind them, chanting Krishna, Krishna, Lord. He says that Jani Ne Kirtana Yajna Sarva Yajna Ar. The Sankirtan Yajna is the best of all Yajnas. I don't know, this subject is such a big topic. We could go on about this, I think, for many weeks. And we only have a few days, but maybe we'll also be able to discuss something about why, I'm going to try tonight something, why this Kirtan Yogi is the best of all. Prima Mahagana. And from this yajna, uh, something gets birth. Just like in an Ashramada yajna, they may kill a horse as part of the yajna. But that horse will take birth again. So in this yajna also, something is taking birth again. Something is dying, and something is taking birth again. Our material desires are dying. Our material life is dying. And coming out of that Sankirtan fire, like the phoenix rising again from the ashes, is a new life. Uh -huh. And that uh, new life is a life of Krishna Prem. Mm -hmm. And so there's one personality who is the master of that house. He's a grihasta. And he's a uh, grihasta means someone who's an adhikari. He has some qualification. And he's a responsible person for that griha, that home. So this grihasta is Lord Nityananda Prabhu. He's the master of that treasure. Get that heart up under He's the goddess that controls that prema. Why is he saying that Gadadhar Pandit is a goddess? Do you know why? 
Did I hear Pagan is a man? Should I call you a goddess? Do you like that? <laughs> Why are you saying this about Gadadhar Pandit? <laughs> because Gadadhar Pandit is Radharani. So, Srimati Radharani, she's controlling this treasure. Now, we, will, we hope that we can, probably in the last day, speak something about why Krishna came to start this yajna and why he's coming and chanting his own name. It's a very mysterious thing. And why is it that we don't chant Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name? Why, if Mahaprabhu is more merciful, why are we chanting Krishna's name and not Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's name? That's a very, very big subject, which we'll have for one class, I think probably the last. We should be here also? Okay. So we'll make a, a nice loop, a nice small line of that. Finish there. Advaita Charja Gosai Amariya Sakitana Jagistapi Says it, Advaita Charja Goshai Amari Aneha. Advaita Chai, he brought me here. See, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's not coming to be worshipped. He's coming to be a bhakta. He's bhakta rup. Bhakta rupa surupa kaun. Bhakta avataram bhakta. Namami bhakta shakti kaun. Chaitanya Charita describes. He's coming in the form of a devotee. And Vrindavan Dastakur says that Sankirtanai Kapitaro Kamalaya Taksho. This lotus eyed word, Lord, he's the father of the Sankirtan movement. So, uh, Advaita Acharya, he's the one who established that Sankirtan movement because he's the one who called for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu <coughs> to come. And so, therefore, he, he's a Sankirtan Yogi Stapi, he's the, the pillar. The, uh, the, of the Sankirtan movement. <laughs> Why does he say Srinivas? Who is Srinivas? You may think Srinivas Acharya. No. It means Srivas Thakur, because Srinivas Acharya hadn't taken birth yet. When Narahari, uh, excuse me, Lochan Das Thakur wrote this. Why does he particularly say Narahari? Who does he mean by Narahari? He means Narahari Sarkar. Narahari Sarkar was the guru of Lochan Das Thakur. And Narahari Sarkar, historically, was the first person to start writing about the pastimes of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Before Murari Gupta wrote his Chaitanya Treat Mahakali, before Vrindavan Das Thakur wrote Chaitanya Bhagavat, and long before Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami wrote Chaitanya Charitamrita, Narahari Sankar was writing pastimes about Mahaprabhu in the form of Bengali Paya, or songs. Songs about Mahaprabhu. He was the first biographer in that sense, although he was writing songs. You know? So he's saying Narahari Adi, Bhaktagani, because all the devotees begin with my Gurudev. In other words, another point about this is that all these devotees, he's saying, they helped establish the Sankirtan Jagya. So for me, for my Sankirtan Jagya, my Gurudev, he's established this. And he's saying, Narahari Adi Bhaktagana. This also gives some indication about our Kirtan Pranali. When we do kirtan, traditionally, we begin first by offering pranams to our Gurudev. And then afterwards, we offer pranams to the Vaishnavas. First, we offer to our Gurudev. Because we see, as he's saying here, Narahari Adi, first to Narahari, my Gurudev, then Bhaktagana. And then after, to the devotees, we offer to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates, and then find you rather Krishna. Ehi jagya kare kare deha gare gare Aruka sakala lunga So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has a very 
intimate relationship with this yajna because he's Sankirtanaika Pitaru. He's the father of the Sankirtan yajna, but he's also the person we're doing it for, Yajna by Vishnu. He's the origin of Lord Vishnu. So he's the instigator of the yajna. He's the object of the yajna. He's the beginner, beginning, the person who began the yajna. And moreover, he is the yajna. Because Abhinatha Nama Namino. He's not different from his name. So that personality who is th is this yajna in so many ways, he's coming and giving instruction. If you want to do this yajna, this is how you do it. A yajna kali kale. They have gare gare. You take this yajna from house to house. We <clears throat> don't want to cause any trouble. But it doesn't say mundere mundere from temple to temple. It says gare gare from house to house. It's not necessary from temple to temple. Temples are also there and they're very good and they're very useful. Why do we have the temples? What is the necessity of the temples? If we don't have a big temple, people won't listen to us very well. But if you have a big temple, so many people will come. But what do we tell them when they come to our temple? We tell them, A yajna kali kali deha gari gari. You do this yajna in your house. And everyone should do this yajna in their house. Hmm? And you may come to the temple, you may not come to the temple. Not everyone can go to the temple all the time. Not everyone could come here tonight. It's very difficult. Here in Holland, it's very, the traffic is very difficult, and you have your jobs and your families, and your life is a very complicated thing. It's not so easy to come. But we can do it in our home. Because this yajna, there's no obstruction for it. If you want to do an ashramada yajna, some other yajna, it's very, very difficult. Impossible in Kali Yuga. But this yajna can be done in your own home. And it's meant to be done in your own home, because it's a very private thing. You should pour this ghee in the cone of your ear, so it, it feeds the fire of bhakti in your heart. So that should happen in a very personal surrounding. Taruka sakala loka patita pramari. And in this way, you take it house to house, and Mahapu says you should, patita uh, pramari, you should deliver all the different fallen people. This is his desire. I think we may speak more about this on the last day. He has this desire. This is a different kind of desire than Krishna usually has. Because he's not just Krishna. He's uh, Rasaraj Krishna plus Maranakya Mahabhava Moyi Radha. He's Bhakti Naipunya. He's the last limit of Bhakti. He's Krishna with something else added. And that's Srimati Radharani. And therefore we say Namo Mahabhadanyaya. Krishna Prima Pradayate. He's Mahabhadanyaya Avatar. He's the most munificent incarnation because he's in the mood of Srimati Radharani. And Srimati Radharani is Krishna's Kripa Shakti. She's a personification of Krishna's mercy potency. So usually that Kripa Shakti, when Guru Maharaj describes, is controlled by the Icha Shakti. This is a little technical, but it's a very interesting and important point. This Kripa Shakti, this Karuna Shakti, is usually controlled by the Icha Shakti. He doesn't let it out. Because that Kripa Shakti, who is personified as Srimati Radharani, is so merciful that Uttama Adama Kicha Nabachila Jachi Adileka Ko. She'll freely give Krishna praying to everyone. But Krishna says, no, 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 you can't do that. Because they're not qualified. So in uh, Dwarpa Yuga, there was a closed house, and he was distributing this Krishna praying to some, uh, to the bridge bhasis who had already had that, and also to some new people. The Risi Chari gopis were there, Muni Chari gopis were there, they just personified, they came as gopis. There was some fish, as described, who during the time of Matsya Avatar, these fish were swimming around the ocean, these lady fish, and they saw Matsya Avatar and they said, Whoa, isn't he a hunk? <laughs> and then he's a hunk fish. So they, had, they had some desire to marry him. And Machavatar told him, I didn't come here 
just to be a hunk fish. <laughs> <laughs> I came in for some other business to save the Vedas. But later on in Dwarpa Yuga, you can come again. And those fishes took birth as some of the gopis. So he was more merciful. And he also distributed this Krishna praying to Uddhava. And very confidential thing is there. That, so he opened up a school of Braj Prem, and Uddhava was one of the students. And then later on, Vishnu Chakravarti Thakur says he opened up a second branch in Kurukshetra. And then he brought all the residents of Dwarka. But still, Krishna was being very, very selective. Who was going to get this Krishna Prem? Because he's controlling that uh, Karuna Shakti, that, that uh, Kripa Shakti, Srimati Radharani, which is with his Icha Shakti. But. In Kali Yuga, when Krishna comes in the mood of Radha, the Karuna Shakti is, is set free. And therefore, Uttama Adama, Kichina Bhachina, Jachi Adilika Kor. He doesn't consider who's Uttam, who's Adam, who's very elevated, who's very fallen. He's distributing Krishna praying to everyone. This is one reason why our Acharyas, my Guru Maharaj used to emphasize this a lot, it's a little postgraduate note in deity worship why our Acharyas traditionally don't put a peacock feather on the head of Mahaprabhu. Because if we put a peacock feather on his head, then we're telling him, you're Krishna. Right? Krishna wears a peacock feather. But then he won't have the same mood. You know, oh, yeah, that's right, I'm Krishna. And then that Karuna Shakti is no longer free. It becomes controlled by the Icha Shakti. So we like to see Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the mood of a devotee, because that Karuna Shakti, that mercy potency of Radharani, is being freely, uh, being distributed freely. And therefore, he's Mahabhadanyaya Avatar. So, this Sankirtan Yagya is a Yagya for this age. It's described in Srimad Bhagavatam that there are different. Uh, Dharmas for different ages, Kritayad, Kritayad Jayato Vishnu, Tretayam Yajato Makai, Dwarpaye Paricharyayam Kolo Tadhaya Kirtana. In Satya Yuga, what was the Yuga Dharma? In Satya Yuga was meditation, tapas, tapasya. In Treta Yuga was sacrifice, and Dwarpa Yuga was deity worship. In Kali Yuga, it's Hari Kirtan. So the question comes that why is this the best process for this age? Why not? Uh, why it wasn't done in other ages? First of all, we should understand something about the nature of Nam Sankirtan. If we're going to speak something about uh, Yajna. It's described in Chaitanya Charitamrita. Kodi Ashwamena Eka Krishna Nama Sama Shri Ikai Sepa Shanti Someone may say that, oh, you're just doing this Nam Yagya because you're not qualified to do Ashramata Yagya, because you're born, you're not born in India, you're not born in, in an Indian family. Maybe some people, they say like that. So if you chant Krishna Nam, then in your next life you can do some sacrifice. But Chaitanya Chaitanya says that Koti Ashramata Eka Krishna Nam, some, if someone, one, somebody may say that uh, this holy name is a very great thing. And it's so great that one name of Krishna is equal to 10 million ashramata yagyas. If someone has faith in the holy name, they might say, like, doesn't that sound good, would you? Yes. But Krishna Das, or Vrindavan Das Thakur, Krishna Das Kavaraj, he says, Jai don't say that. If you say that, say Pashande, you're a Pashande, you're an atheist. It means you don't understand the glory of Krishna's name. This is nothing to say that one name of Krishna is equal to 10 million Ashramata Jagas. If you try to say that, then you're acting like an atheist. Pasandi has different meanings. Another meaning of Pasandi is that someone who is a false person. In other words, you're a false devotee. You don't really understand 
the nature of Krishna's name. Jai Kai and Dande Tade Jama. You're going to be punished by Jamaraj. If you say this, it's such a sinful thing to say that one name of Krishna is equal to 10 million Ashramita Jagyas. That's such an understatement because the holy name is so much, much, much greater than that that you're going to be punished by Yamaraj if you say something like that. Now you may say, this is you, Gaudiya Vaishnavas, you're a bunch of fanatics. You're speaking like this. <laughs> we want to hear something from Vedic literature. Mm -hmm. So, in Vedic literature it's described, Gokoti dhanam grahane kagasya prayaga gango dakka kopa vasaha yagya yutam meru suvarna dhanam govinda kirtir na samam satam sai. You may want to do something pious. Mm -hmm. You may want to buy a nice bicycle or something for Bhagavan Prabhuji. <laughs> <laughs> something. It's a very nice thing to help someone. Maybe you might want to give away 10 million cows. 10 million cows in charity during a solar eclipse. Mm -hmm. Or you may decide, I'm going to stay for one kulpa mm -hmm. <laughs> in the waters of the Ganga at Prayag. One kulpa means millions and millions of years. I'm going to stay in the water of the Ganga. I'm not going to leave the water of the Ganga in Prayag. Uh -huh. You may do 10,000 yagyas. Uh -huh. Or you may give in charity some gold. You may give the equal amount to Mount Meru, mm -hmm. which means like more than the weight of this universe. Mount Meru is so heavy. Uh -huh. And he says, if you take all those things and you combine all of them together, giving 10 million cows in charity during a solar eclipse, staying for a culp in the Ganga's water in Prayag, Doing 10,000 yagyas or giving in charity a Mount Meru of gold, they're not equal to one hundredth part of chanting one name of Lord Govinda. <laughs> Such is the glories of the holy name. Mm -hmm. The Skanda Purana describes Dana Bratta Tapastirta Chichadinam Chayastitaha. Shakta Yodiva Mahatam Sarva Papa Hara Subaha Radasu Yasame Dhanam Jnana Shadak Navastunaha Akrisha Karina Sarvaha Stapita Seshunama Su. Krishna's taken, Skanda Purana says, he's taken all the power of the benefits of charity, all the power and benefits of doing bratas and austerities pilgrimages, worship of the devas and the great souls, as well as the Asramedha and Rajasuya Jagyas, and knowledge of self-realization, and he's put all of those things, the power of all those things, in his holy names. And so a question comes, why is this Nam Yagya just done in Kali Yuga? Why isn't it done in other ages? Well, Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he describes in his book, uh, Krishna Sanhita, that actually, Nam is always chanted in every age. Mm -hmm. He says there that in such a yuga, they were also chanting the names of the Lord. And they had a mantra. What was that mantra? <coughs> Narayana Paraveda, Narayana Parakshara, Narayana Paramukya, Narayana Paradati. Bhaktivedanta knows. He says that the purport of this verse is that Lord Narayan, he's the goal of all science, language and liberation. He's the supreme destination. Mm -hmm. He says that the name of the absolute truth, when we speak about, when we give a name to the absolute truth, when that name is mixed with opulence, that person is Narayan. Mm -hmm. And he says that in this verse, we find... Uh, Shantaras. Shantaras means that there's five different rasas. You know, Shantaras, Dashiras, what's the next? Sakiras, Vasalyaras, and Madhurjaras. Mm -hmm. So Shantaras means something where there's no relationship, but they're feeling some great awe and reverence. Like a lot of churches, like a lot of Hindu people, they worship God and they say, God is great. Bishmullah. In Islam, they say God is great, uh -huh. and they may have some kind of shanta feeling toward Him, some shanta rest. 
So this verse has pure shantaras and a little dashiras. Then he says, and in Treta Yuga there's also a mantra, Ramananayanananda Mukunda Marisudana Krishna Keshva Kamsare Hare Vaikunta Vamana. These are the names that people chanted in Treta Yuga to get deliverance. And he says, these names indicate the potency of Lord Narayan. And he says, at this stage, uh -huh, the Dasya Ras becomes, it fully blossoms. And there's a reflection of Sakya Ras. There's a great mood of servitorship and a little mood of friendship. And then he says, there's also a, a mantra for Dwarpar Yuga, of the names of the Lord, Hare Morare Madukaita Vare Gopala Govinda Mukunda Sore Yogesha Narayana Krishna Vishnu Virashraya Mam Jagadisha Raksha He says these are the names that they chanted in Dwarpar Yuga to get deliverance. This is the uh, Taraka Nam, the, the name to deliver one in Dwarpar Yuga. And the names in this verse, he says, they aim specifically toward Krishna who is the shelter of unsheltered persons. And he says in this verse, in these names, there's a prominence of Shanta, Dasha, Sakya, and Vatsalya Ras. He says, but there's a different mantra for the age of Kali, Krishna's names. What is that mantra? Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Bhaktivinoda says that this mantra is the topmost sweet mantra. This mantra simply is in Madhurja Ras. Because he says in this mantra there's no prayer. We're not asking for anything. And all the other different mantras, there's something being asked for. Jagadisha Raksha. Oh, my dear Lord Jagadish, you please protect me. Or there's some different prayer in each one of these different verses. But in this verse, there's no prayer for anything. Uh -huh. He says that this mantra reveals the uh, Madhurja Ras. And those persons who chant this mantra, they'll get everything. So then the question comes that why is it that it, it's not emphasized in previous yugas? Why were they doing all this yoga and stanga yoga, standing on their head and doing different things? It's much easier to chant Hare Krishna, isn't it? Hare so why why are you doing all these crazy things? Huh? The problem is that in previous yugas, although the holy name was still there, and although the holy name had potency, people didn't have faith in it. Huh? It's described in the sixth canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, the third chapter, text 25. Prayena Veda Tari, Prayena Veda Tari Dhamma Mahajano Yam, Devya Vimohita Matir Bata Maya Yalam, Trayam Vadikita Matir Madhu Koshkutayam, Vaitani Ke Mahati Karmani Yujamanaha. Because they were bewildered by the illusory energy of the Supreme Lord, Yajnavalkya, Jamini Rishi, and other different Rishis in previous yugas, even though they were writing down, they were writing all these Vedic literatures, they couldn't understand and appreciate the uh, glories of chanting Krishna's name because their minds were bewildered, this verse describes, by the ritualistic ceremonies described in the Vedas, especially the Yajna, Samveda, Rig Veda. So their intelligence became a little dull. And they weren't attracted to the Sankirtan movement. Instead, they were interested in Dharma, Artha, Kama, and Moksha. So we should understand, it's described in the Padma Purana, Dharma, Vritta, Tyaga, Hutadi Sarva, Shubha, Kriya, Samyam, Api, Pramadaha. That in this age of Kali, the holy name of Krishna is everything. Nahi Ara Dharma. It's said in Chaitanya Charitamrita by Sri Chaitanya Mahatma, there's no other yajna, there's no other dharma in this Kali Yuga but for this. But some people, they become very interested in <clears throat> twisting their fingers 
I'm chanting some man. Om Sahasya Sirsa Purusha Sahasya Ksha Sahasya Pala. I'm doing some deity worship, some Abhishek. I'm doing some Homa, pouring ghee in the fire. But we know many places in Srila Prabhupada's books, he says you can't do that. Because no one in Kali Yuga can properly chant the proper mantras. No one understands them properly. No one can uh, recite them properly. And therefore, I said that Dharma, Bratta, Tyaga, Uttadi, Sarva, Shuva, Kriya, Samyam, Api, Pramada, huh? It's actually an offense. It's an offense to the holy name. The Padma Purana says, this is the eighth offense to the holy name, to consider that the holy name, that all these other things, this Dharma, this Bratta, Shuva, Karma, hmm? the Hutadi, Huta Adi, doing some Huta, some Agnihotra, some Jagya like that, that these things are some Shubha Karma, to consider that these things are equal to the Holy Name. This is a great offense. Mm -hmm. We should understand the eighth canto the Bhagavatam describes, Mantra Tash Tantra Tash Chidram, Desha Kala Havastrata. There's always some Chidra in, the, in your uh, mantra and tantra. And sometimes we say in your organized religion, your mantra and tantra, or your chanting of mantras, your performance of rituals and ceremonies. There's always going to be some fault in that. Mantra tas tantra tas chidra desha kalaha vastrita. According to time, place, and object, substance you have for that thing, your samagri, your elements you want to bring for it. We want to do some deity worship. But how you to do deity worship, you need proper gi. In India, in India, it's so hard to find proper ghee. There's one shop in um, Bangkandi Bazaar. It's right next to Bangkandi Mahadev. Yeah. And that shop has a big, beautiful picture of Krishna. It says, pure Krishna ghee. And so many people, they go to that shop to get ghee. Very nice yellow ghee. It has a good fragrance and everything. But our friend Mukunda Dutta Prabhu, yeah. He, the head pujari in our Krishna Bala in Mandir Vrindavan, he spent, I think, 10,000 rupees a few years ago. He sent, took a sample of that ghee to one laboratory to find out actually what's in it. And they came back with it and they found, they said that it's 65% ghee and 35% chicken fat. <laughs> so how are you going to do yagya with that ghee? How can you do that? And in Kali Yuga, everything is contaminated. There are some people, they say that, that don't take cow milk. Because the cows, they're suffering, they'll kill the cows. And I can understand that. And some people, some devotees, they say, therefore we shouldn't take any milk products. Because if you take milk products, then you're going to be supporting the slaughter of cows. I appreciate that point. Mm -hmm. But my suggestion is, if you're going to say that, then you also shouldn't use wallpaper. And you shouldn't use steel, you shouldn't use uh, asbestos, you shouldn't use tires, because all those things have some elements of cow blood or bones in them. In Kali Yuga, practically everything is contaminated. You can't have a house, you can't have a car that doesn't have some parts of dead cows in it. And moreover, Srila Prabhupada said these cows will get benefit if we offer them milk products. Still, some devotees may have another realization better not to take it. We're not trying to make a quarrel about that. That's one realization. But we suggest that our point is simply that in Kali Yuga, you can't find any pure items. And if you're going to do yagya, you have to have pure samagri, pure ingredients. We have our giri raj. In, in, in India, we don't offer him white sugar because in white sugar in India, they find there's traces of cow blood and bones because they use cow bones to bleach the sugar. In, in Europe, and I think in America, they don't do that so much now. Some, sometimes they still do. They're still doing it here? In India, there's a few places that don't do it, but it's practically impossible to find the ones that don't. So we use gur. Because gur, we can get that's pure. We don't get the gur that's very, very bright yellow, because that has haldi in it. And you know what they put that makes it haldi? They, they water down that haldi. You know what they... Water that down with common name? Donkey stool. 
<laughs> it's such a nonsense thing. In the newspapers before we left India, a few weeks before we left, they did some study and they found that uh, something like 70% of the store bought milk in the Delhi area was not pure milk. It was mixed with soap or it had, had urine in it <laughs> and different nasty things, water and soap and different abominable things. And they found that in uh, Jari Khand, in Bihar, in West Bengal, in Arissa, they couldn't find any pure milk whatsoever. And that doesn't mean from the Gosha. In different Bhubanesha, we even go to the Gosha and we watch them <laughs> milking the cow. Once in Mayapur, they were having a trouble getting pure milk. So finally, they, they found one person who was bringing in pure milk. And they knew it was pure milk because he was milking the cow right in front of them. But then after some time, they found he was cheating him also. How are they going to do that? That man was wearing a long sleeve curtain. <laughs> oh, no. Very expert. And under his arm, he had a balloon. It was full of water. And there was a straw going down his sleeve. <laughs> and as he was walking the cow, <laughs> and the water was coming up. <laughs> so, in India, they're very great. They're expert in cheating. Every country in the world has some special quality. Germany is fam famous for cars and sausage. France is famous for wine. And, and, and what, Holland is famous for cheese. Right? In India, they're famous for cheating. <laughs> is, am, am I wrong? In fact, it's a fact. I, whatever you said, I explained to Prabhuji three months before, and he asked. I explained him everything about cow ghee. During the time of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, he forbade the devotees. From, from offering ghee or sugar, <coughs> and that was in the, in the late 1800s, mm. the early 1900s. He was telling him, "Don't do that," because at that time it was contaminated, and today it's, it's completely crazy. So we want to offer something pure that's important. You can't do it in Kali Yuga. It's just not possible. So in this age, the only yagya that we can do is non yagya. We may try to do so many other yogis, but it's just not possible. Uh, in uh, Hari Nam Shintami, Shula Thakur Bhakti he speaks something about yogis and Subha Karma and the reason why Krishna established them. Say Sukha Prakupai Subha Karma tells Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, say sukha prapya pan, to give happiness to the people, you created this subha karma, this pious activities. Dharma, yagya, yoga, homa, brata, doing austerities, doing bratas and yagyas, so the people can have some auspiciousness and they can have some happiness. This is but say sabha subha karma sadhana Say Sabha Subha Karma Sada Jadamoy. All of these things are simply Sada Jadamoy. They're simply mundane. All this Subha Karma. Chinmaya Praviti Tai Kabu Nami Vai. They're not spiritual. Tahara Sadhane Sadhya Jadamoya. This sadhana, for this sadhya, jada moya follow, what is the fruit of this thing? These things are simply, it has a mundane fruit, jada moya. Mm -hmm. Jada means something dead. Mm -hmm. This chair is jada. This floor is jada. It's jada moya. It's simply made out of dead, dull elements. So you get a jada moya follow, a, a, a benefit which is something very dull. What is that? Uchaloka, in Bogasu. You may go to the heavenly planets. 
or you may get some mundane uh, pleasure, some mundane happiness. These things are all uh, Jada soup because they're, they're dead. They're, they're simply mundane. There's nothing really spiritual in them. Say sabha karma bhola nahi anushmati Tate prayasa kura different things, all these different shubha karmas, you may do all these things, but nahi atma shanti, you won't get any peace of mind, you won't have any peace in your heart, any satisfaction. Mm -hmm. He says, tahate prayasa kara atishaya bhranti, it's just a big mistake to try to engage in these activities. Uh. Say Sabha Shuva Kana Upaya Hariya Anicca Rupaya Sane Joka Shukriya Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Shubha Karma Upaya Hariya All by doing all these different Shubha Karmas, what's, what's the benefit? Anicca Upaya Sane You get some Lokasuk, some happiness, which is anicca. It's a temporary kind of happiness, a mundane happiness. That's the best thing that you get by doing all this. This is Bhaktivedanta, this is Haridas Thakur's statements to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, in the first chapter of Haridam Chintani. Then in the fourth chapter of Haridam Chintani, Haridas says, Dharma Joga Jaja That person who gives up all these different activities of dharmic activities, feeding the poor, mm -hmm. different activities of yoga, yaga, yagyas, jnana uh, kanda parts of the Vedas, who gives all those things up, jeba jile krishna nam, and simply takes shelter of Krishna's name, mm -hmm. instead worships Krishna through his name, say sarvopai. That person, he's the best of all persons. This is the only yagya that we can do in this age. And any other type of activities, they have some benefit. But our acharyas are described only in as much as we do them in connection with the holy name. What are other activities? Mahaprabhu gives five activities that we may do. What are those activities? Do we know? These are the life of the devotees, these five different things. What are they? Matura Bas, living in Matura. That's one. Reading Srimad Bhagavatam. Worshipping the deity. That's three. Initiation. No, initiation is not one of them. Sadhya Sangha, associating with the devotees. And Krishna Nam, chanting Krishna's name. <laughs> These are the five different activities that uh, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is making. <laughs> I have a very loud one tone on my phone. I, I try, it's really embarrassing if you're giving class. <laughs> it goes off sometimes. I turned it off before. <laughs> So, we may ask a question. <coughs> if you say, Harinama, Harinama, Harinama Eva then what is the necessity of these other activities? Matura Bas, Matura Seva, living in, in the Dham, Vrindavan and Matura, worshipping the deity, Sadhu Sangha, associating with the devotee, mm -hmm. Bhagavat Shravan, hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. What is the benefit, of, what is the necessity of these four things? If we say that Harinama, 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 Eva Kevala, our fucking mom will be such a nice answer. 
for this. He said that that Anvayavyatirekam uh, Yamu Satsavatasaya. The Bhagavatam, one of the, the Chattashloki verses of the Bhagavatam states that either this Bhagavatam is all about Krishna, either directly or indirectly. And in the second canto of the Bhagavatam, it's stated, Idam Bhagavatam Nama Puranam Brahma Samitam. And Srila Prabhupada translates this verse, Idam Bhagavatam, this Srimad Bhagavatam, this Purana, which is Nama, named Srimad Bhagavatam, Idam Bhagavatam Nama Puranam Brahma Samitam. It's Brahma Samitam. It's completely a, a pure transcendental Purana. But Shiva Sanatana Goswami in Vaishnav Tosha, he gives another different explanation. And Prati Shloki Prati Akshari Nanatakoi, that's allowable. Because each verse of the Srimad Bhagavatam has unlimited meanings. Each syllable of the Srimad Bhagavatam has unlimited meanings. So it's not that there can only be one meaning. In fact, if you study Shiva Prabhupada's books very carefully, you'll see, for example, if you take the, um, what's the verse? Bhayam Vitya Binidei Sita Shat verse from the 11th canto of the Bhagavatam. This Prabhupada gives, I think, at least three different translations, completely different meanings of this one verse in different places in his books. Because Prati Shloki, Prati Akshri, Nanantakoi, there can be unlimited meanings. So Sanatana Vishwami in Vaishnatosha gives a different explanation of this verse, Idam Bhagavatam Nama. Puranam Brahma Samhita. He says that Idam Bhagavatam, this Bhagavatam, Nama par, is the Nam Purana. This is the book which is all about Nam. And this is why Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu will emphasize Srimad Bhagavatam so much because of its connection with the Holy Name. If we contemplate these five different activities which Chaitanya Mahaprabhu gave us, we can see that each one of them is connected very intimately with the Holy Name. And in fact, the Holy Name is the basis of that thing. For example, deity worship. Can we, do we allow any person who walks off the street to worship the deity? Well, sometimes in our temples in the West, maybe we do. In Janmasmi or something, they come and they, <laughs> what is this place? Well, how are you Christians? Oh yeah, sounds good to me. I'll go in there and they, they grab a conch and they also start pouring something over the deity. They won't let you do that <laughs> in India in most temples. Because only someone who's uh, Dwija, who's a uh, Dwi Janma, who has who's a second born person, who, who has second initiation, uh, is allowed to worship the deity. So how does a person come to that qualification to get that second initiation? By chanting the holy name. And when you're worshiping the deity, what is the strength of, of your worship of the deity? Chanting the holy name. You're chanting the holy name, and by the chanting, you'll become purified enough you may get second initiation. And in that second initiation, you use that to worship the deity. So by that chanting of the holy name, you've gotten to worship the deity. Krishna's come to you in the form of that deity. You are chanting Krishna's name, saying, Krishna, please come, please come, I want to serve you. And the fruit of your chanting is, is the deities come in that form. So then when you're worshiping the deity, how are you worshiping him? You're chanting Hare Krishna. That's how, and then when you're praying to the deity, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati says that everyone, when they're worshipping a deity, they have something they want. Even Srimati Radharani, we read in the Balita Madhav, that she was worshipping a deity of Krishna in the Nava Vrindavan garden in Dwarka. It's a long story. Uh -huh. We told some of you that story, I think. Uh -huh. So what was her desire? She was praying to that deity. She didn't know that actually Krishna had come and hidden that deity in the bushes. And the Krishna was standing there, <laughs> acting like he was a deity. And so Srimati Radharani, she was praying to that deity, My dear deity, please become a living, moving person. Please become really Krishna. <laughs> because everyone, when they worship a deity, they have some prayer, even Srimati Radharani. And much to her great happiness, that deity came alive. <laughs> that was actually Krishna himself. So. We want something from a deity. And what do we want? We want Namruchi. We're praying to the deity to give us Namruchi, to help free us from offenses to the Holy Name. So everything about deity worship in this age is connected with the Holy Name. And everything with the Srimad Bhagavatam. The Srimad Bhagavatam, as we're saying, is uh, 
Nam Mahima is glorification of the holy name. So these two activities are based on the holy name. Similarly, Sadhu Sangha is described by Jagannanda Pandit. Yeah. Sadhu Sangha Krishna Nam Chai. All that I want are these two things, Sadhu Sangha and Krishna Nam. Why does he emphasize these two things? Because to get Sadhu Sangha, how do you get Sadhu Sangha? We say that Bhakti Stu Bhagavad Bhakti Sangena Parijayate. This is an important verse, many of our acharyas quote from the Brihan Naradiya Purana, that Bhakti comes from Sadhu Sangha. So then how do you get Sadhu Sangha? The next line of the same verse says, Satsange prapyate pundi sukritai, purvisanchitai, by some previous sukriti. And so what is that sukriti by which we get sadhu sangha? Bhaktivinoda Thakur, in his Amrita Prabhaha Bhasya commentary on Chaitanya Charita Amrita, in one purport, in, I think it's in Sanatana Siksha, in the teachings of Sanatana Goswami, he says that uh, there's three different types of sukriti. He says there's uh, karma mukhi sukriti, jnana mukhi sukriti, and bhakti mukhi sukriti. Sukriti which leads to karma, sukriti which leads to jnana, and sukriti which leads to bhakti. And what is that sukriti which leads to bhakti? Chanting Hare Krishna. Why is it that we have Harinam initiation? Does anybody here, does anyone here have Harinam initiation? Raise your hand. Okay. Krishna Kun, you have Harinam initiation. Okay. So you all have Harinam initiation. Does anyone here want to get Harinam initiation? <laughs> I think we have a few persons like that too. So all of you should know the meaning of Harinam initiation. But it's a great mystery. You know, according to Pancharachika Vidhi, Shastra, which describes the rules of ceremonies and, and worship, when you get a mantra, the guru is supposed to speak the mantra in your ear. Have anyone, has anyone here been to a first initiation ceremony? I'm sorry, everyone has been initiated, of course. <laughs> everyone, I think, has been to one. Have you ever seen someone getting a mantra from the guru? Not on the paper. But the Maha Mantra? I'm saying first initiation. No. The Gayatri Mantra later on we do. But I'm speaking about Harinam initiation. So why do it? In some Vaishnava societies, they say it's bogus. It's just a joke. The Prabhupada did this thing. I'm being a little stronger than what they say, maybe. But essentially, that's pretty much what they say. It's just a bogus thing. And Prabhupada did it just to encourage you. And it doesn't really mean anything. But second initiation is a real thing. But we find that very painful. So then we're supposed to understand that Srila Prabhupada was doing just some blind ritualistic ceremony just to cheat us and it had no meaning. But on the other hand, have you ever heard of someone getting initiated into a mantra where they were chanting the mantra before initiation? You don't chant Gayatri mantra before initiation. But we chant the Hare Krishna Maha mantra before initiation. In fact, that's one of the qualifications of initiation, of Harinam initiation. So there's a mystery. Isn't that it? a very mysterious thing? Have you thought about this before, Misho? Have you thought about this? You should think about this. What does it mean? You, get Harinam, you want to take Harinam initiation, but you haven't thought about it. So you have to think, what is the meaning of it? Why do I want to get this thing? Is it just some ritualistic, empty thing? What does it mean? Why is it? How can we and say that someone is getting initiated in the holy name if they're not getting the mantra and if they're chanting that mantra before initiation. Some, some branches of Gaudiya Vaishnavism, some Gaudiya Mats, they won't give japa mala to new people before initiation you know, because they consider that to be kind of initiation. But in ISKCON we do that. We give japa mala freely to everyone. Does that mean that we're doing something wrong? Some people might say so. But I would suggest no. In his um, 
Lagu Bhagavatam Rita. Rupa Goswami has given a very important verse. Sri Chaitanya Mukod Girna. Hare Krishna ki Varnaka. Majayanta Jagat Premi. Majayanta Jagat Premi. What is it, Krishna, from the last line? Vijayantam Tadabaya. Vijayantam Tadabaya. May this, this Maha Mantra, this Hare Krishna Mantra, be all glorified because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is given it to everyone in the universe. So this is why we chanted before, because it was already distributed by Mahaprabhu. In fact, it said, na diksha, na chasatkriyam, na purushcharjam, ikshate. Chaitanya Chaitamrita, Madhulila, chapter 15, text 108, states that it's not necessary to get initiated. The holy name is there for everyone, because Mahaprabhu gave the holy name to everyone. So then what are we doing? What does our Harinam initiation mean? We should understand there are different types of things. Jiva Goswami and his um, Brihat Kramasandarva commentary in the sixth canto of the Bhagavatam, he describes there's two types of chanting. Snehasam Yukta, chanting with affection, and what he calls Kabalanam or common chanting, hmm? common name. So many people are chanting common name. But, but uh, Jagannanda Pandit, he describes in one place, hmm, that the syllables of the name are not really the name. What does that mean? The name is the name. Give me a break. Hmm? <laughs> it's in the dictionary. It's in the books. Someone can chant it. The people, we distribute these books we, and, and we... They, they read the book and then they start chanting Hare Krishna. But it's not the same. We heard about one person who, uh, he was a farmer living in a, in a small village, a remote place, in uh, West Virginia. And one day he went to the big city to buy some things. And as he was walking down the street, he saw there was a book in the garbage can. Brand new book. Well, so he picked it up, looked at it. Bhagavad Gita. It's <coughs> Prabhupada's Gita. Some devotee had been distributing the book on the street and he probably pressured someone to take it and give them a big donation. I have one friend who used to, to sell books and he'd ask people, what do they do? And once, what, what is their occupation? And one person I was near him once, he's, this person said, I'm a hunter. And my friend said, that's great. You'll, this book's all about hunting, man. You're going to love it. <laughs> <laughs> so, it, it's all the book, but uh, when the person gets home and <laughs> starts reading it, this book's not about hunting. <laughs> and so they threw it in the garbage. So that simple farmer, he found it, and he took it home and tried reading this, this way they talk there in, in West Virginia, they talk kind of like this, you know? Yeah. <laughs> I used to live near them, so I can speak a little like this. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> so he started reading that book, and this is really good. Hmm. And it'd be telling me I should chant this Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. So he started chanting. And it says somewhere in the book you should chant 16 rounds, 108 times. So he was doing that. But he was having such a hard time. And later on, he found out from someone, yeah, them Hare Krishna people, they have a commune there in West Virginia <laughs> called New Brindavan. And he went there to see the devotees, and he had a big question. He said, how do you all do it? How do you people chant? I've been trying to chant this six <laughs> but it takes me eight hours to do it. <laughs> because he'd never met a devotee before. He was reading it in a book. And he, he thought you should sing it. He said you should sing the mantra. So it was taking him so he, there was no way he could chant 16 rounds a day. And the devotees told him, no, 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 you don't. You just Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Krishna. <laughs> you can do that, really. <laughs> he was astonished. So there's a difference in understanding, even in this example, from just reading a mantra in a book. In his first, in his, I think it's the fourth verse, no, first verse of his book, Brajlila Stava. Srila Raghunadas Goswami, he states that Nama Shrestam Manamapi Sachiputram Atrasurupam. 
He said that I have gotten Nama Shrestam, the topmost name from my Guru Dev. Mm. What do you mean the topmost name? Is is Krishna, you know, some days on five days a week he's only a common name, his name, but then on Saturday and Sunday he's a bigger name? Is he something different? No, Krishna's Krishna. Krishna's name is Krishna's name. But there is a difference. And therefore, Jiva Goswami says, there's two types of chanting. Kebalana, common chanting, and Sneha Samyukta, chanting with love. So we're chanting before initiation. And I, the first question I asked my Guru Maharaj, when I was coming to him, I asked him, what is the difference between chanting before initiation and chanting after initiation? And he told me that he liked that question. He said, chanting before initiation will give you dharma, artha, kama, and even moksha, liberation. He said, but you can't get Krishna praying. That Krishna praying you can only get through a devotee. And therefore, in the uh, Padma Purana, it said, it stated, Atashi Krishna Namadi Nabadidrain Indriyai. Did you ever think about this first, Mishra? No, I just hear it. Okay. <laughs> Atashri Krishna Namadi. Nabhaved Grahindriya. You can't perceive Krishna's name with your senses. Then what are we doing? Why are we chanting Krishna's name if I can't perceive his name with my senses? It says, Sevan Mukhi Jivado, Swayameva Sparachiti. What does Jiva mean? It means a tongue. So I am able that if you do service with your tongue, then it'll <clears throat> manifest. What service do you do with your tongue? Eating prasadam. And something else? Chanting Hare Krishna. Chanting Hare Krishna. But why are we... Then it, this, it, I'm very confused by this. Atashri Krishna Namadi Nabaved Grand Indriya. With your senses, your Indriya, uh, which means your tongue, you can't perceive Krishna's name. But then the next line says uh, that by doing service you can perceive. There's a similar verse in Chaitanya Chaitamrita. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Sajjakabunoy. That Krishna Prem is a, the eternal proclivity or, or natural position of the living entity. And Sajjakabunoy. It's not obtained through any sadhana. But then the next line of the verse says Shravanadi Sudha Chitti Koryedoy. That if you do sadhana <laughs> it'll awaken. It's a great contradiction, isn't it? What does it mean? Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Thakur, in his Anabhriti, in his commentary, he states that there's a difference between someone who's chanting Krishna's name without initiation and someone who's chanting Krishna's name with initiation. The difference is that we're doing it as a service. Sevan Mukhi Hijiva Do Swayameva Spiritu. Sevan Mukhi. When we're doing this as a service to our Guru Dev. So we're chanting Hare Krishna Mantra before initiation, because Mahaprabhu gave it to everyone, and we're doing that to purify us. But then what's the difference? What's the meaning of, of Harinam initiation? The meaning is, my Guru Dev says, now I'm accepting you. And now I want you to have a different name. I'm going to give you a name. And I also want you to chant in a different way. Therefore, what does he speak about at Harinam initiation? Ten the ten offenses of the holy name. Now I'm going to accept you, but I'm going to I want to give you a special name. I'm going to say some prayer to Krishna. You're already chanting Krishna's name, but I want Krishna to manifest in a special, different way now through that name. But before I accept you, you have to agree. You're going to avoid these ten offenses. And then you may get that Nama Shrestha, which Raghunath Das Goswami speaks about, that Sneha Nam, which uh, Jiva Goswami speaks about. And this is the, the mystery of Harinam initiation. It's not a bogus, meaningless ceremony. It has a very deep purport to it. Because Krishna tells Arjuna in the Adi Purana, Ye me bhakta jana parta, na me bhakta sate janaha. Those people who say my devotee, they're not my devotee. But bhaktanam chaye bhaktas te ne bhakta tamo mataha. The person who's a devotee of my devotee, he's my real devotee. 
And some people say there's no necessity to take a guru. I'll just chant Hare Krishna. I'll just read the books. Srila Prabhupada says in one lecture, he says, some people say, what is the necessity of accepting guru? I'll just read the books. I'll read the Bhagavad Gita. And then Prabhupada says, of course, they have a very bad experience. Do we know anyone like that? Do you know anybody like that, Misho? Who had a bad experience? And then they say, what's the use of reading the book? I'll just, what's the use of, of accepting Guru? I'll just read the book. And Prabhupada goes on to say, I have this, I can find it in my notes, and if you want to know the exact place where Prabhupada says this. Prabhupada says, they may read Bhagavad Gita a hundred times, they may read Bhagavad Gita a thousand times, and they won't understand a single word, because they haven't approached a devotee. So Krishna is his name. But in this yajna, we have to get this name, to do this yajna from one of Mahaprabhu's associates, from the Sacharya. Therefore, in, in this song, he's singing Nara Hari Adi Bhakta Kori. That beginning with Nara Hari, my Guru Dev, Adi, all the other devotees. Because my Guru Dev, he's giving me this name. He's giving me Krishna. Krishna is there in his name. And I should realize as Bhaktivinoda Thakur and Jaiva Dharma, he says you only need to think of one thing when you're chanting Krishna's name. Krishna. Just think mm. that Krishna is non different from his name. He's personally present. Just try to be conscious of that one fact. Be conscious, not unconscious. So in this Nam Yagya, uh, we do this for the pleasure of our Guru Dev. He gets pleasure by, by us chanting this name. And therefore we have an Arpana Mantra. And when you do some Yajna, you have to offer it at the end. And so also for this Nam Yajna, there's an Arpana Mantra. Nama Yajna Maha Yajna Kalo Kalmasa Nasaya Krishna Chaitanya Pritjarte Nama Yajna Samarpana. This is a Samarpana Mantra. The mantra that we use to offer our chanting with. Nama Yajna Maha Yajna. Of all the different yagyas, this Nam Yagya is a Maha Yagya. It's the greatest yagya. Kalo Kama Sanasana. It'll destroy all the evils of Kali Yuga. Krishna Chaitanya Pritjarte. It's very, this has a number of meanings. Krishna Chaitanya Pritjarte. It's very dear to someone who is Chaitanya in the consciousness of Krishna. Because it's very dear to them because when they're chanting Krishna's name, they're not doing it mechanically. They're doing it with the consciousness that Krishna is personally present. They're Krishna Chaitanya. Their Chaitanya, their consciousness is of Krishna. They're thinking, I'm with Krishna when I'm chanting. They're seeing that. Another meaning is you know, that person who's always Chaitanya of Krishna is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Krishna Chaitanya Pritarate is very dear to him. So I'm offering it to him, uh, Nama Yagya Samarpana. And I'm doing it through my Gurudev. So we like to call this the Kirtan of our Sampradaya. I think we'll speak more about that later on. It's a little bit of a long topic. And it's getting a little late. Maybe we'll stop there. Are there any questions or comments from anyone? Uh, there's one more thing. For all these years I don't understand this. When I have uh, the Maha Mantra, mm -hmm. why do we need another Mantra with a second initiation? That's a very confidential thing. Oh. We have seven different mantras in our second initiation. The first of which, interestingly enough, was not given in the Siddhik succession. <laughs> and we say that mantras should be given in the Siddhik succession, but that's the Brahma Gayatri mantra. And that mantra was not chanted by Bhaktivinoda Thakur or by Gorky Shodas Babaji. The Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta introduced that. And he did that to establish the Vaishnavas and Brahmas. And he did something which was not done before. These things are a little confidential. We don't always speak about these things. But if we don't speak about these things with you, then you won't understand. And if we try to keep devotees in ignorance always, then they just become mushroom devotees. It's like mushrooms, you keep them in a dark place and you feed them a bunch of stool, you know? and they, they, they grow in that dark place, but if the sun comes out, they die. 
So sometimes we don't want to speak things to devotees. We should speak these things. They're confidential things. It's important. But to devotees, we have some adhikar. So Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta wanted to show that Vaishnavas are automatically Brahmins. And that's stated in many places in Vedic literature. And to do that, he started getting paita, these uh, upaviti, these uh, Brahmins. We call them paita in, in Arisa. You don't see a paita, a Brahmin thread, in pictures of Bhakti Dhamma <coughs> Thakur. He didn't have one. You don't see a paita, a Brahmin thread, on pictures of Gorka Shodas Babaji. He didn't have one. And they didn't give it to Shiva Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati. He was inspired by Krishna. We consider him to be a Nitya Siddha, eternal associate of the Lord. And empowered by the Lord, he did this thing. And so we accept this. But he did it for a purpose. And he gave us his Gayatri mantras. Many things can be said about these mantras. I don't want to speak some things right now because I don't think everyone is not appropriate in a mixed audience, especially with devotees who don't all have these mantras. But uh, our understanding, according to Chaitanya Charitamrita, is that these mantras are actually not necessary. No diction, no chasatkriya, no purishtrad, and ikshati. We cited this verse from Madhulila chapter 15. It's not necessary to have second initiation. But the Holy Name gives everything. So then why do we have second initiation? We have the second initiation to help us to chant Hare Krishna better. And in particular, second initiation means to worship the deity. We have seven different mantras. Let's make a note of one, two. Two of those mantras, at least, and sometimes three, are used for deity worship. Specifically, and, and you can't do deity worship unless you have those mantras. That gives you the adhikar to do that. So why do we have deity worship? Because it helps us. We, in the words of one acharya, if you're, we, we don't take chanting Krishna's name very seriously. How many of you today thought about how important air is? Did anybody raise your hand? Did anybody think, gee, it's really a good thing that there's some air to breathe? Have <laughs> you thought about that today? Really? I should have <laughs> Is it something you think about every day? No. Is it something you think about constantly? It's something we very rarely if ever think about. One person thought about it one time today, but one time, you know, maybe in a whole year, or at least a month or a few weeks or something. It's not something we think about very often. When we drink milk, do we think, wow, it's a good thing there's a lot of grass so the cows can eat. Do we think about that? We, think we don't think about that. We think those things are common things. We don't pay attention to air. We don't pay attention to grass because they're everywhere. But actually they're very, very important. So many times we don't pay much attention to the Holy Name. We think it's not such a big deal. Better thing is I can learn to twist my fingers like not a <laughs> This is a cow's udder and it purifies things when you're doing poison. Isn't that cool? Isn't it? <laughs> We'd like to learn something like that. We'd like to learn to chant some mantras, and do deity worship. We think that's a better thing because we don't have proper faith in the Holy Name. So seeing that, the Guru sometimes, he says, better that you worship the deity. There's a story that we printed in one of our Krishna Katamrita Bindu issues that once there was a one disciple, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta, and they were organizing a feast and he was having all the devotees sit down. So he's having all the Dikshit devotees, the devotees who had second initiation, sit down first. And then all the, the second devotees, who are now Mashrayi, who had only Harinam, they were sitting later because the Dikshit devotees were considered better. And Srila Bhakti Siddhanta came and said, what are you doing? You've got it backwards. You should have the other devotees go first because they have more faith in the Holy Name. <laughs> These other fellows, they think they have to have Diksha to have something. But the Holy Name gives everything. So we have the second initiation so we can do deity worship because we don't have faith in the Holy Name properly. So we need to see, we can't see the form of Krishna. So we need to have a form and that form is the deity. And that, that form of the deity is not different from the Holy Name. And Jiva Goswami, he describes in his um, Bhakti Sandarbha, Agatcha Smaranam Vishnu no, oh, excuse me. Uh, where is it at? Mm. It's in, in Bhakti Sandhava. Yad yapi anya bhakti kalokata vitada kirtanakya bhakti samyoginaiva. 
Hare Krishna. Thank you. Have, it's okay. He says you may do the there's eight there's another vidi bhakti, eight, nine different types of bhakti. So why are we doing all these other types of bhakti? All we have to do is chant in the holy name. He says you may do them. He says, but if you don't chant Hare Krishna before, during, and after them, then there's no benefit to them. So we may do deity worship, but if we're not chanting Hare Krishna beforehand and during and after, then there's no benefit for it. So the holy name is everything. And that deity worship, that second initiation, is meant to help us to go deeper in our chanting of the holy names. And there's some other things that can be said about it also. But in a general way, it's, that's the answer. Is that okay? It's a very really good question. We should be simple and ask questions like these things. We should think about things. Not just that we put things in cruise control and just drive our car like that. Because if you put your car in cruise control and you're driving in the middle of the city, what will happen? <laughs> they ask you can't, you can't do that. You can't put it in cruise control. Anything else is there? You so cool? uh, in uh, connection with this, what about if you wash uh, at home? Because if you, you are not initiated, no diksha, but still deities, they recommend you to take deity. Well, we do deity worship on the order of our Gurudev. We can't do deity worship on our own. The, uh, what do we sing in the, in the uh, Guru Ashtakam prayers? Yes, nice song. He's engaging his disciples in that way. My Guru Dev is doing deity worship. I can't worship Giriraj. I told my Guru Maharaj this. He gave me Giriraj. He said, you worship me. I said, Guru Maharaj, I can't. But my understanding is I'm doing it on your behalf. He said, yes, this is correct. Our Guru Dev, he can't be there. So through you, because the disciple, he's um, Vishram Bena Guru Seva. He's considered to be a partial manifestation of his Guru. Because his Guru Dev has given him birth again, he's his father, therefore you're Dvija, you're, you're, uh, you're initiated by your Guru Dev. So you can do that thing on his behalf. So sometimes some Vaishnavas, they may allow their disciples to worship Gorni Thai or some deity with only Harinam initiation. But that's up to Guru Dev. And it shouldn't be something we just speculate on our own. I think I'd like to do this thing. We have to take permission from Guru. Nobody is telling you that in the beginning. I have gone in time 13, 14 years. <laughs> I've heard this so you're doing something, and that's nice, and it's not entirely wrong, because Srila Prabhupada, he said that, that you think that these things are just dolls, these deities. He said, so we'll have some Gorni Thai, we should make Gorni Thai deities and distribute them to everyone yeah. on the street. And they'll get some benefit from that, and you can tell them they're love dolls, <laughs> something like that. He says, so, and there's some devotees now who are doing that. They're making them in, in uh, China or something, and they have these beautiful Gorni Thai deities, and they're distributing love dolls or something. <laughs> they were, and they get some benefit, but it's not the same as when you're worshiping under the guidance of your Guru Dev. 
So we, we should, I would suggest you take initiation. You should go to your grandmother and say, grandmother, what should I do? I was wishing on these before. Can you please give me some instruction? Maybe you should install them properly, or maybe they're already installed. It depends on his conception, because we, we can't do anything with those words. Okay? Very good question, very honest question. Jackie, you have a comment? Or yeah, yeah, no, I was asking, how did you get, you guys, there's no, there is high is there, and they don't have enough faith to mention like that. So in our case, we get high enough initiation. We don't have faith. We get second initiated. So to order to do deity worship and enhance our faith in the Holy Name as well. Is there not a, a system like that for the other yugas? Like in, in the Bhagavad Gita, there is a lot of deity worship. Well, the problem is, according to this verse in the Bhagavatam that I read from, that they get the rishis, Jaimini Rishi and others, they became so enamored with the twisting of the fingers, <laughs> showing the chanting of the mantras and the yagas, it's very enchanting. And we've even seen devotees sometimes in our own movement become very charmed by, we know, we're doing deity worship. I mean, it's a very charming thing. They chant Purusha Shukta, they do mudras and mantras, it's a very involved thing. But Srila Prabhupada, in the early days, and I'm not saying this means now, but in the early days, he told the devotees that with the deities, your puja should take half an hour. should be finished. And in the early days, he told them, don't have deities. They had uh, paintings of the Panchatattva, yeah. which is still going on in the Shilashivara Marsh today in Hungary. There's centers that have been there for 20 years or more, isn't it? And they have a, they, there's no deities. And they have a huge congregation, sometimes 50 or 100 devotees or something. In the congregation, there's no deities. They just have a painting of the Panchatattva because he, want, he wants to keep it simple. That was Prabhupada's desire. So I did say there's something to be said for that. So the, anyway, these rishis, they, they were bewildered by the flowery words of the Vedas, as Krishna says in the Gita. And therefore they couldn't understand or appreciate the glories of the holy name. And it was hidden. It wasn't, no one was coming to distribute that thing. Not like now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Right. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came and said, hey guys, wake up. He sent you to Naikapita Ro. He came to initiate this thing. There's nobody else who was doing that before. Right. In a big way. Good question, Prabhu. Uh, uh, Prabhuji, but even if they did chant this uh, this Dalga Bhama now in, in, in the other yogas, why couldn't they reach Madhuyas? Like, mm. like, like That's also a very good question too because, and, and maybe there's certainly some exceptions to that, different Vedic literatures, the Brahmavarata Prana and the Bhagavad Sanghita. Bhagavad Sanghita is, by the way, someone has some doubts about it. It's quoted by Sanatana Goswami in Deha Bhagavatamrita. That's another subject about the, but, that, but, but, but in that book it said that there were personalities in different yugas who were attracted to the Lord, mm -hmm. but they couldn't achieve their full relationship with Madhurja Ras until Dwarkar Yuga, until okay. they came in that way. So they had some idea, mm -hmm. but there was, it wasn't, Krishna wasn't manifesting like that at that time, and they didn't have a proclivity of nature like that. But for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he's coming and doing something special. We say that, that uh, there's another song, what is it? Um, So it's sung by Lochan Das Thakur, that we often sing. Yeah, you know the first line of it? She knows. <laughs> anyway, he says that, that uh, this is something by my dear brothers, uh, that uh, you should, Danya Kali Yuga or Chaitanya Avatar, you should worship. What does he say? Oh, my dear brothers, who's going to cross over this ocean of, of, of Kali Yuga? He said, you should understand this is Danya Kali Yuga. It's not an ordinary Kali Yuga. In every Kali Yuga, Nam Kirtan is a Yuga Dharma. Mm -hmm. But this Kali Yuga is something different. But, yeah, because, of because of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And when we, we usually the uh, Yuga Avatar oh my gosh, <coughs> is white colored usually. In, uh, is that right in Kali Yuga? But, but Mahaprabhu is not the normal color, usually because it's a Narayan feature, and he's not giving Madhurja Ras in the holy name. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he's coming, he's giving that thing. 
Yeah. And in previous ages, nobody was coming to give that. They had no conception of it. Yeah, yeah, Maybe a very, very few select hidden persons had some understanding of it, okay. but not in a broad way. Because in the mantra, there is a certain conception. Some people, they chant the Hare Krishna mantra and they chant Ram, Ram first. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hare Ram, Hare Ram. Yeah. And they think that Ram means Ramachandra. And they say you should chant Ram first because Ram came before Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> I once asked Fakir Mambabu about that. And his comment, nice comment, he said that <clears throat> he had done research on different palm leaf manuscripts of different Puranas that had the Maha Mantra in it. And he said that he found that uh, the, the, originally it's given with Hare Krishna first. But he found that in manuscripts which had been, uh, there was a scribe, because used to be someone would hand write them, that this, if the scribe was in the uh, Ramananda Sampradaya, which mm -hmm. is the first one, then they put Hare <laughs> Ram first. That was his comment about it. In any case, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he told us to chant Hare Krishna first. When I asked Fakir Mahaprabhu this thing, which sometimes the devotees say that, that that he changed the mantra because yeah. that uh, otherwise he, to speak. he was not allowed to, to chant this mantra, yeah. and he became very annoyed with that. He said, where does it say that? Yeah. And I said, well, I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I just heard some, maybe a hundred you told me that, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody oh. said that to me. And he said, nonsense, where does it say that? And he's right, I, I don't know. And I also recently heard that, but, and, I, and I also asked, yeah, I read this So some people, that they think that Ram means Ramachandra, some think it means Parsharam, some think it means Balaram, or whatever. You know, what do they think, you know, we won't appreciate it because we say that Hare means Radha. So we're not chanting Radha Parsharam, Radha Parsharam. <laughs> but we say that Ram means Radhika Ram. Anything else to say? Okay. Maybe we do kirtan again for just a couple minutes? Yes. Yeah. We'll sing another raga for this time. It is a very nice raga. This is, this is called Trivena. Trivena.